Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 93. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how logarc meth 2 configuration parameter is not an alternative for logarc meth 1. This slide talks about the problem scenario and solution. So we want to demonstrate how logarc meth 2, which is the secondary log archival path uh, or method, this is actually not an alternative or backup for logarc meth 1. So usually we see there are logarc meth 1 and logarc meth 2, two archival log mechanisms are available for use or configuration parameters are available. So it is not like if logarc meth 1 fails then we can configure logarc meth 2. So that is not the intent actually. So that is what I want to demonstrate with an example. Suppose consider a, a system or a database which is having logarc meth 1 and it is configured to, to some location and it fails, right? So that is the scenario. So if it fails and do not think that logarc meth 2 can be configured and we can solve that issue. So if you do that, the archival of logging will still happen to, uh, to the logarc meth 2 location, but you'll find that the active log directory will become full eventually when the transactions are running. Uh, the, the files, the the files that are getting archived to meth2 uh, location will still be there available in the active log space taking up that particular uh, folders uh, space so eventually it will it is going to get full and you're going to get running out of uh, uh, disk space for more log file allocation so and also by configuring logarc meth2 you are actually consuming twice the amount of transactional log files until you fix the issue which is your logarc meth1 failing okay so what is the solution the solution is to configure failure archive log path so the failure archive log path is another configuration parameter available for you in the dbcfg so what is the advantage with this particular configuration parameter when you set it is it will act like a temporary location where if your primary archive log uh, mechanism fails all those log files will move from the active log directory to this failure archive log directory and once you fix the issue all the files from the failure archive log directory will move back to the original uh, archival log location which failed initially so that is the main advantage uh, uh, you don't need to keep track of which log files failed whether they have been moved to the original location like that so let's Let's just quickly uh, get into an example and I'll give a demonstration as to what I uh, explain uh, as usual. Okay, so here actually I have a terminal so I'll go and start my instance first. Okay. Okay, surprisingly taking a long time. Okay. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to uh, show you here. I'm going to update the uh, first. I, I'm I'm going to show you the correct scenario. So let's update the failure archive log path. So fail arch path configuration parameter to a particular location, and then I'll show you the CFG parameters. Okay. So you can see that now there is a database that is available uh, with logarc meth one and failure archive log path configured into different local directories okay so this is the setup okay so let me just connect to the database create a table and just run some transactions on it okay so in the meantime i'll i'll go to those directories home db2 inst1 db2 nst1 node 00, 0 log stream so this is where the log files are there so you can see i have configured three primary log files here and i will also open a new tab so wherein i go for uh, home db2 nst1 fail arc logs db2 nst1 dbase node 00, 0 log stream c00 so currently in the failure archive log path nothing is there uh, 123 124 and 125 are available in the log directory and also I'll open another new tab. So there I will go uh, and uh, 
home db to nst and arch logs db to nst and dbase node 00, 00 log stream c00 so this is where the log files are getting stored so we have till 123 dot log okay so 123 got archived so 124 and 125 is still there so because of the running transactions so we find that so as the transactions are running uh, there are see look at this one so there are three primary log files in the active log directory and in the archive log directory it's getting archived so you can see 123 is also here and also here so which means it got archived okay failure archive log path nothing is there as such because you know my log is all in in good shape so nothing no issues okay so now everything got run successfully so after this what i'm going to do is i'm going to simulate a failure so I'm, I'm just moving the arch underscore logs directory to a different name like I'm just saying AL like that so what will happen so because of that uh, the archival of logging will stop okay so once the archival of logging will stop there are still transactions that are going to run in the database so let's see under that scenario how how this works so con remember we have configured the failure archive log path and what is the advantage with that I'm going to show you so just copy this okay and I'm going to execute it here so the movement is complete and the transactions are now running so you can see that the primary log files it's not hogging the primary log files right so you you are still seeing only three log files here and you can look in the failure archive log paths the as the transactions are running it's going to take some time okay so as the transactions are getting running and like it's getting filled up you'll find that the because of the failure to archive in the primary log location so it's going to try it's going to fail and it's going to put those files here so you can see that 125 got moved here okay so you see 125 126 127 look at the number of log files this is very very important okay uh, okay so it's still running one two three one two three four surprisingly it is very slow so i don't know why i just have to look into the configuration okay it's still slow one two three four okay so we'll we we'll look at the log files so see yeah 125 is in the failure archive log path 126 is also in the failure archive log path and here you can see it's only three primary log files it's not so if a log archival fails that file is moved from the active log directory to the failure log directory it's not hogging up your transactional log space and you will see that once we fix the issue the files will move from the failure archive log path to the primary location which is this one right so it should it sh and the files will get deleted from here so that is the advantage so that is what i'm going to show you so one two three four five six seven and one more entry will be done okay one two three four five six seven times it has executed another one entry is what is required so you can see 125 126 127 is is there in the failure archive log path so 127 120 only three log files so 128 129 130 so you can see four log files here now and uh, three log files in the primary uh, three log files in the active log directory okay so one two three four five six seven eight times it has completed we we'll just wait for the completion and after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to fix the issue so the fixing is like again renaming renaming it back okay so let me just do that okay done so i have renamed it so you can see that from the failure archive log path the files will be moving away you know like see 126 127 128 will automatically move here now see 124 125 126 see here the failure archive log path one file after one file is just going missing it's actually archiving okay see here so that way 
once we fix the issue in the primary archive log path the failure whatever files that were there in the in the failure archive log path got moved to the archive location automatically without any intervention right and look at the log stream which is the the active log directory there is still only three primary log files there is no hogging of space here so this is the correct way of doing it now let me show you the wrong way of doing it okay so for that let me just update this parameter to null and i'll do a connect reset and i'll update this uh, log arc method to so the end i'll show you the settings okay So you can see now I have a database with logarc met one and logarc met two set. Okay. Now there are. So here is the understanding that if met one fails, so met two is there. So you know I can just live free. But that's not that. It's not that simple. I'll just show that show that case to you. Okay. So now I'll we'll connect to the database as usual. I'll run all these uh, transactions. Okay. So what will happen now is there is um, so that there is no failure archive log path. Instead, there is met two logs. Okay, currently in met two there is nothing, but there is uh, active log directory is having this, and this is your primary archive log directory which is having 129. So 130, 131, 132 is in your primary. Now look it look in the active log directory. You are starting with three files, but you will see that as the transactions are going, um, as the transactions are building up, you will see a lot of hogging of space here. Like the even though these log files are getting archived to your your uh, uh, secondary location, which is met two logs, right? Even though the the files are getting, but it will not move from your active log directory. Rather, if this particular path fails right your primary log fails it will continue to hog here so that is what i want to show you okay see now the four uh, four times it has run so a couple of log files should have been uh, moved here yeah see 130.log got archived into your secondary location so 130 131 right so both these log files are moved to the secondary location so 130 131 132 three log files are there and it's also 131 it's also available so far so good okay now let us create a scenario wherein uh, same thing right so my primary archive log location is renamed so that i i i'll simulate the failure then after that i'm going to run these huge transactions okay okay the movement has happened the renaming has occurred so all these transactions will continue to run uh, but you the important thing to note here is look at here what happens here in the active log directory you will find it is consuming more and more and more space okay so you'll find that 130 131 so as the transactions are running and the it is getting submitted for archival the log files are getting submitted for archival it will archive in your met2 location so you can see that 130 131 132 after some time you will see 133 134 and all that so similarly here also 131 sorry 132 133 134 okay look at here so till 131 it's there so from 132 it it, it will not put here because it's it's just not there okay so let's check 132 133 134 130 131 132 okay so let it run so one two three four times it has run so look at your 132 133 134 so 130 131 132 133 okay you see here right see 132 133 134 135 so now one two three four files last time when i ran it was only having three files here right that was because the files are getting moved from archival location from active log directory to the archive location right so here also it is getting moved see it's getting moved 
right so 132 133 134 is here but at the same time 132 133 134 is still in the active log directory as well so it's going to hog your active log location so just because your log arc met 1 failed and even though log arc met 2 is available the file is not moving to met 2 the file is moving to met 2 i mean it's not moving it's just copying right so it it's it's still there here right until you fix the issue with your primary archival log location you are going to hog up space here so this is what i was saying if the failure of the primary location occurs the files are getting staying the files are getting you know uh, uh, the files are continuing to live in the active log directory consuming the space here it is also getting archived also here in the secondary location but that still doesn't stop you from moving of files here right so it's going to hog up your space in the active log directory eventually as the number of transactions here are running you're going to hit uh, some kind of a disk full scenario right if it is a heavily uh, heavily used database you are going to hit this disk full scenario eventually until you fix this issue with the primary uh, archive location right so how do i fix that so i i just again simply rename it back okay so let's just uh, do that okay so once i rename it back also the you you'll see that you know these log files are so from 132 you should see here see 132 133 134 135 so it has till 135 so it has you know archived it so uh, once the 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 path got fixed in the primary archive location the archival of log files have happened in the primary location okay so that that is good but still you you find those all those files here right so it should be only three files. I showed you how it was only three files when I was using failure archive log path. Now it became six files. So it 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 lot depends on the number of transactions you have and how long you are going to take the fix take to fix the primary archive log location error. For that longer time, the number of files are going to increase in your active log directory. So the concept here is always always configure failure archive log path that is the correct way of doing it uh, don't think that if you have log arc method and log arc method configured you're not going to land into any issues you are going to land into issues if something like this happens so that is the learning uh, that i want to pass that is the tip i just i just want to uh, tell you in this tutorial hope this information was useful to you as usual um, Thanks for subscribing to my channel and uh, uh, any new viewers, please subscribe to my uh, channel DB2 LUW Academy in YouTube.com. See you in the next video tutorial. Until then, bye-bye.